Starfield's launch wasn't exactly a smooth landing, but that's nothing new both for Bethesda Game Studios and the game industry in general. While many found this game enjoyable, others couldn't stand most of its outdated design and were ultimately disappointed. To be fair, I find the game's marketing responsible for player disappointment, especially when someone like Todd Howard, the game's director, boldly claimed that Starfield is just Skyrim in space, when in reality, the game is more comparable to Fallout rather than Skyrim. But it's understandable. Starfield was supposed to be the Bethesda evolution everyone wanted, and he just said it in an exciting way. But I digress, as I was also among those who dropped Starfield after a few hours of playing it during the launch period. I decided to wait a few months and see if the developers would fix some of the core issues or at least iron out some of its game-breaking bugs. After a few months of waiting, the game's first major update finally dropped and I decided it was the best time to play the game properly. During my playthrough, while I noticed that most of the bugs were gone, I also noticed that the underlying issues were still there and I really don't think that some of them are fixable. Starfield was supposed to be the crown jewel of Bethesda's portfolio, but something went wrong during its development phase. And after spending a lot of time with the game, I'm going to tell you why Starfield didn't live up to expectations. Starfield is a NASA punk title and tries to stay as grounded as possible. You will find lots of real-world references and in general, it's a what-if scenario for humanity's future and interstellar travels. Therefore, you shouldn't expect another Star Wars or Mass Effect from it. With that being said, the game also breaks its universe rules almost immediately by introducing superpowers that allow you to do things like altering gravity. You will also encounter alien-shaped spaceships and the Starborn. They're the people who have crossed the unity, or simply put, they are people from other universes. I wish they had embraced one theme over the other, but currently, Bethesda's excuses for the lack of some features just don't make any sense, story-wise at least. Starfield's lore is so shallow that calling it paper thin would be an understatement, as most of its noticeable events in the past 300 years are explained in a museum tour during a side quest. Comparing any of that to all their Bethesda titles just seems unfair to me. The lore is actually the contrary of what I would consider boring, but sadly there's just not much to it and the game doesn't even try to share more details with players. To be honest, this game is not shy to leave many things unfinished, especially regarding to the story elements or the gameplay mechanics. The main story revolves around discovering alien artifacts and figuring out their origin, a question that remains unexplained to the end. The Constellation, one of the many available factions in the galaxy, aids us in the hunt for these metal objects. However, I would argue that none of the Constellation members, including Sarah or Vasco, can even hold a candle to the likes of Nick Valentine or even Dogmeat from Fallout 4, who were more integral to the story compared to the most of the shallow cast of Starfield. On top of that, I don't even consider Fallout 4 a very well written game, so that speaks volumes about this game's level of writing. To the game's credit, the Crimson Fleet is the best faction throughout the whole experience that at least has a decent storyline that reminded me a bit of Disney's Treasure Planet, one of my childhood favorites. Some other factions, such as UC Vanguard, had the potential to beat Crimson Fleet in terms of narrative, but unfortunately, they all dropped the ball halfway through. Due to the game's absurd level of writing, every interesting idea such as Terramorphs, a mysterious Varun faction, and other concepts never get enough development time. Other than half-finished ideas, the dialogue system is another thing that hurts the narrative in an unpleasant way. Firstly, the dialogue choices are almost exclusively limited to being either a good guy, an evil person, or a dumb douchebag. And secondly, the persuasion mechanic is one of the most hideous things I have ever witnessed. 
Imagine walking up to an NPC that is about to blow an entire spaceship to kill everyone within just because you have ruined their career, set them 20 years back, and sentenced them to life in prison and tell them, hey bro, I know you wanna help me, and I know we both don't like bloodshed, so please help me. And then the NPC suddenly gets convinced and decides to cooperate. That's the level of writing we're experiencing in this game. It's not even limited to a certain quest or a character, as it's a running theme in the entire game. Unlike the overly used chosen hero trope, our protagonist is a simple miner. The reason why the constellation wants us to work with them is apparent, but since we aren't a special hero or a recognizable celebrity, I just find it really odd that every single NPC in this game finds it so easy to trust and rely on a total stranger for their decisions. Everything is written as if our protagonist is the center of the universe and is the solution to every problem out there. This in return makes the vast majority of the side characters feel like a bunch of quest givers with no real depth or proper personality. I consider these issues immersion breakers and they never allowed me to enjoy most of the stories despite the cool premise of the game. While we can always turn a blind eye to the lackluster writing and enjoy the gameplay, in Starfield's case, the Bethesda formula has damaged the core gameplay loop. The reason this formula could work in Elder Scroll games or the Fallout series was due to their design structure, since you could encounter different things along your journey and hardly needed any fast traveling. Unlike those titles, however, Starfield spreads a map's worth of content across a galaxy filled with a thousand planets. This becomes a major issue once you realize that the rusty technology the game's are running on, also known as Creation Engine 2, can't handle the sheer size of the world and is constantly blocking your progression with loading screens. The exploration is streamlined into opening up clunky menus, choosing a point of interest that usually lacks variety, and depending on whether you've already been to that place or not, watching a loading screen or two, and finally landing on the planet's surface to witness a lot of… this. Due to the realistic approach of the game, only a small portion of planets host flora and wildlife, while most other planets are barren worlds filled with rocks. Because of that, and the fact that you can load up only one tile of the planet's surface per landing, you can't even explore the whole place without facing more loading screens. But perhaps it's for the best, since there's absolutely nothing interesting in any corner of these soulless worlds. Although it's understandable, there are lots of planets that the developers couldn't handcraft every single detail for them, and they had to rely on the procedural generation systems. But then again, the lack of variety in the locations and tons of loading screens makes this huge galaxy seem very small and limited. Discovering the same old cave system with the exact placement of dead mech bodies that I had already visited on another planet in a distant part of the galaxy was truly a disappointing moment for me. But at least Bethesda has promised to fix the variety of points of interest in a future update. Even the handcrafted sections like New Atlantis City, which is supposed to be the capital city of the settled systems, feel very small. You need to use the subway system to travel to different parts of the city, but in reality, it's so small that the subway is only there to justify the loading screens. The same things happen with other cities as well, especially with Neon City being the worst example, as it feels as big as the smallest district in Cyberpunk 2077. And this is supposed to be its nightclub. I mean, it's not even comparable to the one from Mass Effect, let alone the cool bars and clubs from Cyberpunk. Starfield's quest design is reminiscent of old MMO games. Firstly, there's an insane number of fetch quests and almost all of them feel like doing a chore. And secondly, the backtracking for almost all of the quests, whether we are talking about the main ones or the side stuff, becomes extremely tedious. Due to the lack of a proper communication system in Starfield's universe, voice can't travel faster than the speed of light, so each time you proceed through any quests, you have to do a lot of backtracking. The prime example would be the Crimson Fleet storyline where you get to constantly go to space pirates and back to see Steff crew and watch a bunch of loadings and a spaceship docking cutscene which gets old pretty quickly. This could be solved in multiple ways. 
For example, a radio communication feature could save players a lot of time by making the quest givers contact us, or even a simpler method would be a mechanic similar to Final Fantasy XVI's Quick Complete that would teleport the player character to the quest giver's location once the objective has been updated. However, pulling either of them will not be easy for the developers since they should rework almost every questline to replace all the backtrackings with the suggested features. Bethesda continues the trend of streamlining RPG mechanics with Starfield. While there is no traditional class system, you can choose different backgrounds that can provide early game benefits and some minor dialogue choices. And there's also a skill tree system that allows you to customize your experience. But the skill tree is filled with lots of unnecessary stuff that is required in order to unlock better skills. I don't like this design choice as it just forces me to grind unnecessarily for things I don't even want. Which doesn't sound great when you think about the quest structure of the game. Also, I find it odd that you can choose to be a part of any faction simultaneously and apparently no one even cares about it. You can be a pirate or a space cowboy at the same time. It's a bizarre thing to not lock one content over the other or at least change the consequences of doing such a thing when it's suggested that some of these factions are sworn enemies. At least the gunplay is well made and there's a good weapon variety too, especially if you decide to upgrade them. Tweaking combat difficulty is one of the many new quality of life updates Bethesda has added that allows you to reduce the bullet sponginess of enemies so you can experience an action-oriented combat or vice versa. Despite all of that, the hunt for temples takes the cake as the game's worst possible questline. These temples would grant you unique superpowers such as the ability to see the future or using gravity force and many more. But the process of acquiring them is the most annoying thing Bethesda could have come up with. To locate a new temple, first you must visit Vladimir. You can't get the location of every temple at once, so you have to revisit him regularly. And on top of that, there's only one temple layout copied and pasted across the entire world. Imagine how many times you have to endure the pain of watching a loading screen, docking cutscene, running long distances with nothing between your landing zone and the temples, and a boring minigame of flying through lights. Unlike the writing and backtracking issues, temples are something that could be fixed with an update as Bethesda really needs to rework how we tackle them. While the team is going to add vehicles in a future update, the distance you're traveling to each temple shouldn't be as empty as it is right now, and the temple itself should either be a special kind of dungeon or a challenge course that encourages the player to use the power-ups in different scenarios so they can master them. Not only would this make them varied and memorable, but it would also add a new layer of challenge and fun to the game. Spaceships are not only used for traveling across the world, but they are mobile homes that can also be used in combat as well. While you can always buy different ships from vendors, some quests would also reward you with powerful ships that can save you a lot of time and money. Not only that, but you can also build your spaceship and design it the way you want. The shipbuilding mechanic is intricate and detailed, and is tied to both gameplay and story progression. Also, in order to unlock some of the upgrades, you must unlock some special skills first, which could end up being useful in the long run. Unfortunately, exploring space with spaceships is not fun, since there's literally nothing in between planets except for some debris or the occasional random NPCs that would either task you with fetch quests or fight you because they're space pirates, so the potential of this section is totally missed. I really wanted to populate some of the empty planets using the outpost mechanic. However, it's quite the opposite and doesn't work the way at least I expected. The building mechanic is very clunky and you can't turn any outpost into towns or cities as you can only assign a few crew members to each of them. Come to think of it, it becomes even less interesting to engage with the outpost mechanic when you find out how Starfield's New Game Plus works. The New Game Plus starts the moment you cross the Unity, and past that part, you will basically lose everything except for your skills, power-ups, and levels. This means you will lose your inventory, ships, and outposts if you decide to do a New Game Plus run. It's just not fun to put a lot of effort only to lose them all in a new run. 
Although the concept of New Game Plus sending us to another universe is cool by itself, the execution leaves a lot to be desired, and I wish there was more variety to the parallel universes than simply changing some minor dialogues and, at best, a few things in Constellation. While Creation Engine is an outdated piece of technology that no amount of tweaking would fix some of its core issues, it's still considered one of the most versatile game engines that allow people to modify game files and change or add things to their liking. Considering that people have already created fascinating mods such as gameplay tweaks, character overhauls, aliens and more prior to the release of Creation Kit 2, the game's official mod kit just shows how powerful this engine can truly be. And now that the kit has been officially released with the June update, we can expect to see tons of interesting stuff in the upcoming years. However, the recent update also introduced the good old Creation Club to the game. While I'm totally on board with support supporting mothers for their hard work, seeing Bethesda charging players $7 for a single quest, an armor and a weapon for a faction that should have been in the base game since the release just reminds me of the infamous horse armor DLC back in Oblivion days. Note that this type of practice is not exclusively limited to this game, as Bethesda have pulled similar moves with Fallout 4 and Skyrim as well. It's a great thing to recognize mother's hard work and pay them what they really deserve. Also, I would appreciate to receive a better gaming experience, but as a AAA company, releasing an unfinished game, slowly adding the missing content back to it, and then charging people money for some extra bits of those missing stuff is just unacceptable, and we shouldn't allow it to happen however small and harmless they might seem at the moment. Starfield is a collection of great ideas hampered by old technology and poor execution. While improving the already existing mechanics and adding some of the missing ones will overhaul the experience, it's still a fundamentally flawed game and not even the evolution we expected from its creators. The game is built upon an old foundation and at the same time, it doesn't utilize the most important thing that Bethesda's formula is known for, which is exploration. As a result, there are a lot of immersion-breaking moments like the excessive use of menus for navigation and loading screens that make the world seem small when it's supposed to be a galaxy filled with lots of planets. Bethesda's tendency to streamline mechanics, outdated design, over-promising and under-delivering, and worst of them all, lackluster writing damaged this game deeply. And for all of that, Starfield didn't live up to expectations. If you don't mind lots of loading screens or you're okay with fast traveling instead of exploring the world organically, can handle all the backtrackings and find it enjoyable to complete a checklist of copied and pasted activities, then sure, give a Starfield a go and you might actually love it. But for everyone else, the recent update shows that Bethesda is willing to fix the game and the addition of the new quality of life improvements has overhauled the experience to some extent. I believe waiting for the release of Shattered Space Expansion is probably the best idea, since by the time of its release, there would be tons of cool mods available thanks to Creation Kit 2, and I suppose the overall experience would be much more enjoyable. I just hope Bethesda drastically improves its design philosophy and technologies for The Elder Scrolls 6, as I don't think some of their current stuff would be acceptable at the time of its release. And this is without considering the stuff other developers could possibly bring to the competition. So please Bethesda, give us another masterpiece like your old titles from the 2000s. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like and share your opinion in the comment section. Till the next one, I'm the folk signing out.